Fires and tribulations of his life and of his death after being mortally wounded on this spot a hundred years ago. I have no doubt that our speaker here today, knows in his joy and anointing, Dr. Kim Horgan, would be doing that in the course of his address. Mountains in Ireland have played an important part in our history. Most of all, their scenic beauty enhances everything around them. And the Knockmail Downs, where we stand here today, are a primary example of that. Mountains have been a wallowing point for the people and a place of refuge during our many years of oppression. Today, we especially remember Liam Lynch, who gave his life for freedom on this mountain. But also today, on another famous mountain, Sleeve Noan, there was another commemoration to mark the 175th anniversary of the monster rally that took place on this day, 16th of July, 1848. The monster rally of that time, organised by Thomas Francis Mayer and Michael Doherty and the Young Irelands, brought 50,000 to the mountain in an effort to exalt the people to fight for their land and to save the harvest at a time of the Great Famine, or to give it its proper name, the Great Starvation. Like 1798, these rallies and rebellions were utterly crushed by the British Empire. And while these rebellions were in many respects seen as failures, they were important stepping stones along the way, and they carried the message of the burning desire for Irish freedom and independence. Down through the decades to 1916, and to the War of Independence and the tra tragic Civil War. Well, Liam Lynch's war cry was, we have declared for an Irish Republic, and we will live under no other law. Liam Lynch's ambitions may not have been fully achieved, but his message still rings loud and clear today. I would also like to reflect on this magnificent monument behind me here, on this spot, and to pay tribute once again to those volunteers who took on the significant challenge of its erection. It was quite unusual that in a short time span of perhaps 10 years after his death, that plans were set afoot to erect this splendid memorial. It speaks volumes for the high esteem in which Liam Lynch was held. The volunteers involved were mainly local come from places like Ardfinan, Newcastle, Balmacarboy and the Clanmail area, and even as far as Arad Lane. And they had to carry materials a considerable distance across what was then a barren mountainside. The result of their endeavours is one of the finest monuments in rural Ireland to a fallen hero. The plan for the monument included a podium in stone that I am standing on today. And the people that put this monument here, they envisaged that commemorations would take place here to remember Liam Lynch in the years that followed. They would not have been disappointed. And under various battles down the years, the Indians has been remembered at this spot. This monument has stood the test of time as has the memory of Liam Lynch. Today we remember all those volunteers who erected the monument, those that repaired and maintained the monument, and those who organised commemorations down the years and who have gone to their eternal reward. In more recent years, we remember Andy O'Reilly, Kishi Harnley, Nicholas McCrae and John Hassett, who were very much part of committees uh, that, that organised commemorations over a long number of years. Today then too, we particularly remember uh, Tom Sullivan and Paddy White from Cork, two great attendees here every year who passed the eternal award uh, in recently. I'd now like to call on Nicholas Oak McCrae to recite the decades of the Rosary, for the repose of the soul of all those who played a part in honouring Liam Lynch down the decades and those who fought and died for Irish freedom. Rod, Rod, Saskaros. Yeah. 
Many had us aware, all on the grass, on tear and the tougher, a span of wood, Rivano, a span of wood, who is a part of the bringing yester, and they were a more day green and happy in his with the roar or marsh men. Many had us aware, all on the grass, on tear and the tougher, a span of wood, Rivano, because the span of the third of the bringing yester, and they were a more day green and happy in his with the roar or marsh men. Many had us aware, all on the grass, on tear and the left. It's ban of wood of no other ban of a thorough of bringing yes, sir. And I ever have all the day and pack in his war or marsh men. The man here touch a wear up, a hollow on the grass, on tear and a docker. It's ban of wood of no other span of a thorough of bringing yes, sir. And I ever have all her day during the pack in his war or marsh men. The man here touch a wear up, a hollow on the grass, on tear and a docker. It's ban of wood of no other span of a thorough of bringing yes, sir. And I ever have all her day during the pack in his war or marsh men. The man here touch a wear up, a hollow on the grass, on tear and a tucker. A span of wood of an oil, I guess a span of furrow of the ring yester. A neighbor of all her day, green a pack in his ship is a roar of a marsh man. The man here touch a wear up, a hollow on the grass, on tear and a tucker. A span of wood of an oil, I guess a span of furrow of the ring yester. A neighbor of all her day, green a pack in his ship is a roar of a marsh man. Glory the Nahar, I guess done back, I guess done spirit naive. Maravir douche, Marava forts. Marabesca brought the sail and the sail of men, and when I heard of some bakers and spirits made by men.